Hey guys, Weta built a king's ransom of amazing and beautiful objects and technology for Ghost in the Shell. Um, we are about to go look at one of the most beautiful pieces I have seen. It is in the 3D modeling room and it is an endoskeleton that is the inside of the major. That's why I'm standing in front of a cabinet full of skeletons. Um, it is one of the loveliest props I have ever seen up close and we're gonna find out how they built it. Holy, holy moly, Jared. I'm speechless. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite this beautiful before. It also looks like when I actually start to parse how many parts there are, an absolute nightmare. I, I, I mean, what, what am I looking at here? So what you're looking at is a collection of basically 3D printed objects, our clear resin, our black resin, there are laser cut components, model made components, uh, 3D printed steel joints to keep the strength, and we've got 3D printed nylon for some of the limbs as well to hold their shape. Jared, I, I know that this stuff doesn't happen as just a one-off low. Let's print it out of this and let's just go. Um, how much experimentation is there into different 3D printing processes to choose the right black, the right plastic, the right metal, the right clear? So regarding that, um, most projects that we do here we will usually run through a paint finish. Um, but for something like this, we went through about a month of testing the different materials to try and make sure that we we're going to get something that had the look we were going for. Yeah. The director would come in and approve different samples and would have different finishes on them for him to pick and choose from. And then we also did some of our own internal film tests to see what it would look like on camera as well, once we had some parts that really looked like they were coming together. Is there, I mean, sure, for some of them, they're like, ah, I'm not sure this is going to work. And then you see it and you're like, it totally works. Was there some successes yeah, like that? Yeah, there were definitely a couple of moments. When we first saw the clear coat on the muscles, we definitely had a, a eureka moment. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll bet, I'll bet. Yeah. How many separate parts are in this exoskeleton? Um, we don't have a definite number, but there's between three and 400 components. 3D printing is relatively still a new technology it takes a while yep. to 3d print stuff and these are some very elaborate pieces how much time did it take to print um, all these? this was hundreds of hours of printing just given yeah how long it takes to print something that's got this resolution of detail and the number of components in it as well did you make just one for the film or was there more than one uh, this is a one-off this yeah. is a one-off is this the final product or is there uh, any more to it that we're not seeing right now um, so this actually fits inside a ballistic gel layer that was also 3D printed. That's effectively um, the silhouette of the actress that the character is supposed to be. That goes all the way over. Yeah, that will be in show as well. Has that not been printed yet or is that... Oh no, that's been printed and filmed as well. But it was quite a challenge to get that all to fit on and stay together. And it doesn't travel as well as the rest of it. So that's in a box somewhere else. Now, I didn't even know one could print in clear resin like this with that type of clarity. We didn't either until we did this project. So previously we had printed in a clear resin, but it was much foggier than what you see now. Mm -hmm. So our props department built a light box that has an absence of UV light that then basically overcures this material. And then after that, we gave it to our paint department and they gave it a layer of clear coat, which gives you the result you see here. That gives it that extra pop. Yeah. Did you guys design this? Did you work from an existing design from production? From an existing design, but that was purely digital. And so then our job is to take that and turn that into something that can be manufactured. So oh my God. So in terms of assembling, you almost have to assemble it twice. There's assembling it digitally, then there's printing it, and then there's assembling all these parts together. You go and you print stuff and it should all fit together at the end, but it yeah. doesn't all quite, so there's so improvisation. There was, there was a bit of back and forth with that, but for the most part, this build went relatively straightforward regarding printer components fitting together because oh, of the cool. accuracy of the printer. Yeah. How large is the team that, that put this together? For physically putting together, they actually try to leave it mainly to one guy. Who really? just basically made it his baby and then had people helping him on and off as he went as well. God, these screws are so tiny. These are like M3s, M4s. M2s. M2s. <laughs> it's, I'm, I really, I'm, I, I'm asking lots of questions, but I'm kind of speechless. I've, I've rarely seen anything this lovely before. Do you guys, have you, did you guys kind of fall in love with the construction? Or are you like so <laughs> sick of it, you're happy to see it be done? Mixed feelings, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was awesome to see it come together for sure. 
What is the what is the place in which uh, it appears in the film? Narratively, it's the major character being constructed. Mm -hmm. So there aren't actually any shots of this particular skeleton of muscles going onto bones. But so you see the eye mask zooms onto the face and it's the physical construction of the AI body. Yeah, it's really great that, that, that the production decided to do this practically. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this is exactly the kind of thing one could do in CG, but the fact that they, they made it practically, that has a veracity to it on film, I, I, I know that, that you can't match. Yeah, that makes it a very exciting project for us because we're the physical side of things versus this project could have just gone to a, a digital firm who would have chucked it all together from that initial file. But yeah. for us to get a project that's challenging where we get to create something as complicated as this is pretty exciting. Well, it also raises the stakes because yeah, you want it to be incredibly as as beautiful. Digital, yeah, yeah that's, that, that's intense. Um, I would say that you met the challenge um, admirably. Oh my gosh, these stick parts are incredible. I like so want to actually move it and articulate it, even though I doesn't. I know that it doesn't articulate. Like yeah, there's a there's a small degree of articulation um, in the arm joints. Mm -hmm. in particular, they just wanted some kind of subtle movement to give it a little bit of life, right. but not so much movement that it was going to take that much longer to put together. It doesn't matter how close you get to this. The beauty of the fine detail is extant at every scale. Incredible. Thank you so much for, for letting us uh, have access to this. It's a gorgeous, no gorgeous piece. Your team is to be commended. It's a masterpiece.